Right, so we've come down off the hill and we've driven about half an hour to a place called Padley Gorge. You've probably heard of it because it's got to be one of the most popular Peak District landscape locations. Basically, it's a steep-sided gorge. It's probably, I don't know, a few hundred metres long. Uh, there's kind of two things to shoot here. There's a waterfall, well, a series of waterfalls, um, and which are great in autumn, so that's perfect for now. And uh, there's also these amazing twisted oaks, uh, sessile oaks, and they're, they're everywhere, and they're kind of these kind of contorted shapes. And um, I, I, I think they're probably a bit better in the mist. So if you, if you get here on a misty morning, perfect. Look, they look very kind of Lord of the Rings. But I still think with the low sun, they should look really nice. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna do the oaks first because I want to, um, I want to make sure we've got low light. I think that's more light sensitive. So should get a good shot of those. And then we're gonna head down to the waterfall and get some shots there as well. Tell you who would absolutely love this location. He's probably been loads of times. Uh, Joe Cornish, he's a very well known UK photographer, a Sigma ambassador, and he loves these kind of, these twisted trees, these kind of trees with personality, these, these kind of uh, contorted shapes. And this one's a great example. Um, he'd be all over this. And uh, yeah, almost, almost kind of Tim Burton-esque, kind, of, uh, kind of corpse bride-y kind of feel to them. Yeah, great location this. So I'm just walking down the gorge, I'm about halfway down and I just spotted at the side of the path this uh, tree trunk. It's a snapped off tree trunk and it's got loads of, uh, loads of fungi growing out of it. It's a really nice uh, shot, I think. Uh, it's quite, impressive, uh, quite an impressive little phenomenon. I've never seen one as, um, as busy as this before. There's loads of them on it. And uh, so I'm gonna use the, tw I haven't got a macro lens with me, but I'm gonna use the Sigma 2870, which is, has a really close focusing distance. So I'm at 70 mil and I can get pretty close in. I can pretty much fill the frame with, a, with, these, um, with these fungus, which are probably a couple of inches tall. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try a few different angles. The light's just dappling through onto them, which is nice. And uh, yeah, hopefully this will be a really nice little close up. I'm pleased with that shot. The dappled light provides lots of contrast and the wide f2.8 aperture has given me a shallow depth of field so the fungus really stands out. The bokeh on this lens is very smooth so it isn't distracting and doesn't pull your attention away from the subject. Right, well I've had a bit of a look around and I've found two uh, kind of areas that I really like in the, in the woodland. There's this old oak tree here it's not an oak, it's a beech, I'm sorry. It's an old beech tree. And uh, it's really gnarly and it's kind of, it's got these kind of long kind of contorted branches that are kind of almost sort of silhouetted against the sky. Uh, the sun's still quite low, which is good. And in the foreground, there's all these boulders, these big rocks, and they're covered with moss. And when the sun catches the moss, it looks perfect. So really nice foreground, really nice subject. There isn't much of a background, but that doesn't matter and there's no sky in this shot really at all, except for the sun, which is just poking through between the branches. And I'm using uh, the Sigma uh, 16 to 28 for this at 16 mil, and I'm using a F22 because I want to get a sun star where the sun is, um, and F22 gives a really nice sun star on this lens, so, so that's all good. Um, and I've just dropped a grad on, just because the, the, the sky behind the tree is quite bright, so, uh, That'll just keep the exposure a little more even across the frame. I really like this shot. So I'm going to get this and then I'm going to head up to the other trees, which are oaks and they're a bit more kind of twisty and um, there's more of them. Whereas this is just one big, one big tree, but the, the others are sort of lots of small trees. So uh, yeah, should be a couple, couple of nice shots here and then we'll head on down to the waterfall. For me, this image really sums up the feel of this woodland with its autumn leaves and gentle light and moss covered rocks. In the end, I chose an image without a sun star. It just seemed too distracting and it stopped the shot feeling balanced. I spotted this second composition on the path back up to the gorge. I love the interplay of the colors and the soft side lighting at that particular moment in time. 
The 61 megapixels of the Sigma FPL provide massive detail in the leaves and the bark. And then at the twisted sessile oaks at the top of the gorge, I tried a shot with a Sunstar, taken at f22 and using the gnarly, jaunty angled trunk of a tree to inject a feeling of energy into the composition. This shot is definitely one I want to retake in the mist for that Tolkien-esque look. So Padley Gorge is a pretty popular location with photographers, so um, yeah, it's probably in the top five in the Peak District. So that, that means that you know, there's, there's lots of existing shots of the gorge on, on Google. If you go onto Google, you'll find loads of them. Um, and I think with a lot of locations, that's a problem because it's really hard to find a kind of a unique angle. In some places, there really is only one shot. You just put your tripod down and take it, and it's the same as everyone else's. But here, I think, I think there's just so many, there's so many positions to it. I mean, the gorge is, there's probably, this is Burbage Brook, there's probably 100 or 200 little waterfalls all the way down. There's loads of places to set up and, and shoot. So there's always an original shot here, and I think that's important when, you, you know, when you're out shooting. You don't just want to take the same shot as everyone else, right? So, um, so I've got a, 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 a big boulder here in the middle of the, of, of the, of the brook. I've um, got a nice little uh, sort of bit of foreground here with these two or three little, little trickles coming down. Um, some nice autumn leaves. I think autumn's a good time to shoot this because um, you, know, cause you get the colour and, uh, and the falling leaves and, and there's plenty of water in the stream so it's a, it's a good season to come. So again for this shot I'm using the Sigma FPL and I'm using the Sigma 16-28 to on it so very wide angle not quite as wide as the 14-24 to but it's a lot lighter and you can put filter holders on the front so I think for this kind of shoot that's my preferred lens uh, and I'm shooting at 16mm um, and that's giving me you know, I've got some extreme foreground here and some distant background, so I, I, I kind of want both in. I'm very close to that foreground. And I'm shooting it around about f18, which is higher than I'd normally go, but I want to make sure that I've got, I've got focus all the way through the image, so the, the leaves at the front here are in focus and the trees right at the very back. Um, and also that gives me a, a slightly longer shutter speed, which uh, at ISO 100 at least. Um, so the only thing that's really missing from this shot at the moment is light. Actually, I think it's just coming back. So it's been behind a cloud for a while, but it's just starting to, to dapple back through. Um, and I think it's nice when the, the sunlight dapples through trees and picks out little, little kind of highlights on the, in the landscape. So maybe a bit of a moss or, or a bit of a leaf or a rock or always looks nice. So um, yeah, All right, here we go. Perfect. It's back. So. I've taken some uh, portrait and some landscape. I actually think I like the portrait shot here better. Yeah, we'll see what it looks like when there's a bit of light on the scene and uh, maybe get them both on screen and you see you can have a look. In portrait orientation, I was able to get the rock in the foreground in frame, which helped to anchor the eye and gives the lower part of the image balance. But in landscape, even at 16mm, I couldn't get far enough back on the rock I was standing on to get both the foreground rock and the treetops in shot, so the composition doesn't quite work as well. A great location and really beautiful at this time of year. It was time to leave Padley Gorge and head north just a couple of miles towards Hathersidge, still very much in the dark peak area of the National Park. Okay, so we're at our third and final location. We've come up here to Surprise View, which is just, it's still in Hope Valley. In fact, you can see Hope Valley there right ahead of you. You can see the Hope, the, the Hope Valley cement works right in the distance. You can just see the chimney. And this is running down Hope Valley. We've got the River Derwent that you can see snaking through there. We've got the road that leads down to Hathersidge, which is the town you can see in the distance. Um, the colors are fantastic up here. Uh, so it's all very, uh, yellowy uh, golden leaves we've got these um, silver birches beneath us here which have all gone a nice yellow uh, so I think in post we can give that a bit, you know, a bit of a bit of a punch in it all and it, they'll look really nice and colorful um, probably got about 45 minutes to go until sunset something like that it's a bit hazy at the moment uh, which is a shame but that could work in our favor depending on the sunset that we get 
and what I'm going to do is I haven't decided on whether to put any foreground in yet. I might just shoot with the with the, the sort of the mid ground trees as my foreground rather than a rock or something. Um, but I'm going to wait till the light's a bit better, and then I'm just going to get a really nice vista of this of this valley. So yeah, we're going to get set up. We're going to use the uh, Sigma FPL as we did earlier, 61 megapixels to play with, so loads of resolution. I'm going to use the 28 to 70 for this uh, landscape, I think. Um, that seems about right for here. Uh, but I've also got the Sigma 100 to 400, which um, I'm going to use to pick out bits of the landscape. This is a nice little kind of um, little fields with trees in, that casting long shadows, that kind of stuff. So, so I think there's a few shots here. So we'll get set up and uh, see how we get on. With the sun now quite low in the sky, I wanted to try a wide angle vista, but not so wide that it included any immediate foreground. So with the 28 to 70 on the camera, I used a focal length of around 30 millimeters and used the silver birches in the mid ground to fill the lower part of the frame. I also used the Sigma 100 to 400 to pick out a couple of little vignettes in the landscape, eliminating any sky for a cleaner composition. What an amazing view this is, and definitely worth a visit around sunset. So I said earlier that this location was going to be a bit of a gamble, uh, and on balance it probably hasn't quite paid off. The, the, you know, the, the view is beautiful, straight down the valley, the River Derwent, Hathersage in the background. It really is a, a very impressive vista, but it relies on the light quite heavily i think and we just didn't really get it we did take a shot uh a bit earlier so probably 30 or 45 minutes maybe before sunset and it was okay uh, there was light on the land and we were getting those nice long shadows where the you know behind the trees and and so on um but after that the cloud moved in and you know really right until sunset it's just just gone down you can just sit in the background it was behind clouds so the sky looks nice it looks nice now but the land has been in shadow for for the last 45 minutes. So we didn't quite get the light tonight. I think if we had, it would have been a really good shot. But, uh, you know, I think that's, that is landscape photography, isn't it? You know, you, it's a very kind of win some, lose some uh, uh, game, really. You, you know, sometimes you go out and you get, you get great shots. Like this morning, we had perfect light. We got the temperature inversion, nice location, um, no wind. It, I mean, it was perfect. Uh, and then tonight, not so good. I think you've just got to take the rough with the smooth. Um, but overall, I would say, you know, the Peaks is a brilliant place to shoot. It's my, it's my personally my nearest uh, national park. I live in Lincolnshire. Um, so uh, it's probably the one I come to more than any, anywhere else. And um, there's just so many places. So there's loads more we could have done today. Mam Tor, Stanage Edge, uh, Lumsdale Falls, you name it. There's, there's millions of them. But, um, but yeah, we've only had one day. So, uh, you know, it's difficult to get around all of them, but, I, you know, it's a, it's a great place and uh, absolutely uh, we'll be back very shortly to shoot some more stuff. So that brings us to the very end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, uh, we'll be looking forward now to episode three, uh, which we're going to do at another UK landscape location or landscape area. Uh, maybe it'll be another national park. Maybe it'll be a bit of coastline. Who knows? Uh, we want to hear from you as to where you want uh, me to go next time. Um, is there a place in Britain that you think uh, is Britain's best landscape uh, location or set of locations? Tell us below in the comments and hopefully uh, we'll be able to get there and make a little video. Um, so we'll see you again soon and thanks again for watching. Bye bye. Do tell us below in the comments where you think Britain's best landscape is. And if you've used the Sigma 16 to 28, 28 to 70, or 100 to 400 like I did in today's video, tell us below in the comments what you think of them for landscapes.